welcome back dear students in today's lecture we will analyze the directive principles of state policy contained in article 45 46 and 47 we will cover these three articles in today's lecture first of all talking about article 45 of our constitution this article makes provision for early childhood care and education to children below the age of 6 years this article was substituted by 86th constitutional amendment act of 2002 and its date of enforcement is 1st april 2010 the direction is that state shall endeavor to provide early childhood care and education for all children until they complete the age of 6 years this is the directive principle for the state to follow that they will provide they will make provision for early childhood care you see there are so many categories of vaccinations free of cost for infants those who are newly born and we have so many other schemes for the care of the health of the children in our country and all these schemes are in implementation of this directive principle contained in article 45 and an additional directive principle is to provide education to children below the age of 6 years to every child and the direction is that the state shall endeavor to provide early childhood care and education to all children until they complete the age of 6 years then dear students uh, we have learned in the earlier lectures also that article 21 capital a which was added by again 86 constitutional amendment act this article 21 capital a provides that state shall provide free and compulsory education to children between 6 to 14 years of age see up to 6 years it is the duty of the state to provide education to all children up to the age of 6 years now 6 to 14 is also another direction rather it has become a fundamental right also besides directive principle when article 21 capital a was added in our constitution as a fundamental right because it falls in chapter 3 rather part 3 of constitution of india and this article provides that state shall provide free and compulsory education to children between 6 to 14 years of age on the other hand article 45 as we have seen it provides that the state shall endeavor to provide early childhood education and care for all children up to 6 years of age so up to 6 years education is to be provided by the state between 6 to 14 again it is the duty of the state to provide free and compulsory education to all the children between age group of 16 to 14 dear students originally article 45 directed the state to take steps for free and compulsory education for all children up to age of 14 years this was the original article and there was no particular significance in choosing the age of 14 years as a limit at which obligation of the state for free and compulsory education to cease but most of the countries have fixed that age for free and compulsory education the constitution of india had put a time limit of 10 years 10 years from the date of commencement of the constitution of india that is from 26 january 1950 to 25 january 1960 within which the goal set forth in article 45 was to be achieved unfortunately the goal continued to be far from ground realities and it could not be achieved that's why this change in article 45 was 
proposed and substituted in our constitution. Finally, a modified version of original article was incorporated as Article 21, Capital A, as a fundamental right by 86 Constitutional Amendment Act of 2002. And this same amendment changed this article in the present form. So my dear students, you are witnessing that directive principle of state policy contained in Article 45 is being implemented and the right to education is now a fundamental right under Article 21, capital A. Moving on to the next directive principle contained in Article 46, which relates to promotion of educational and economic interest of scheduled castes, scheduled tribes, and other weaker sections of the society. And the direction for the state is that state shall promote with special care the educational and economic interest of the weaker sections of the people, and in particular of the scheduled caste and scheduled tribes, and shall protect them from social injustice and all forms of exploitation. We have so many legislations for promotion of educational and economic interest of scheduled caste and scheduled tribes. We have provision of reservation in our constitution by which we are promoting the educational interest of scheduled caste, scheduled tribes, and other weaker sections of the society. The beginning of this debate started with important leading case decided by the Supreme Court. That is State of Madras versus Champakan Deor, Dorai Rajan. It was decided in 1951 by the Supreme Court. In this case, the Supreme Court refused to let fundamental right declared in Article 29, Clause 2 to be whittled down by Article 46. That is the directive principle. So in this case, the object of the impugned communal order, the state of Madras had issued a communal government order by which reservation of seats in educational and medical colleges was notified. And this geo was struck down by the Supreme Court in 1951. So in this case, the object of impugned communal order, which allocated seats to different communities in medical and engineering colleges, was to advance the interest of educationally backward classes of citizens. But unfortunately, the Supreme Court held this government order as void for violating fundamental right contained in Article 29 clause 2. The argument that the object of the communal order was the promotion of the cause of backward classes in furtherance of directive principle contained in Article 46 and therefore could not be violative of Article 29 clause 2 was rejected by the Supreme Court, establishing the supremacy of fundamental rights over directive principle of the state policy. So the equation. After this, Champakan Dorai Rajan's case was three upon four, that the fundamental rights were given priorities, whereas the directive principles were given a backseat driving because the prominence was given to fundamental rights. Even if the government is making certain legislations for the upliftment of scheduled castes and scheduled tribes by way of implementing the directive principles contained in Article 46, but the Supreme Court said no. They said this order of the Tamil Nadu government is void because it violates fundamental right under Article 29 clause. So dear students, this Champakan judgment is a still and was much criticized in the legal circles. This situation and ratio decision die of Champakan case was changed and overruled by the Constitutional First Amendment Act 1951, which added clause four in Article 15 of our Constitution. And this Article 15 clause four authorized the state for making special provisions for the advancement of socially and educationally backward classes of citizens or for scheduled caste and scheduled tribes. 
See the ratio decidendi of Champakan Dorai Rajan's case was overruled by addition of Article 15, Clause 4 in our Constitution of India. Now, this 15, 4 is in consonance with the government order of state of Tamil Nadu. They made provision for reservation of scheduled caste and scheduled tribes in medical and engineering colleges, and 15, 4 is also talking about. The same thing that state can make special provisions for the advancement of any socially and educationally backward classes of citizens or for scheduled castes and scheduled tribes. So the impact of Champakan judgment is over now by Constitutional First Amendment Act 1951 by way of addition of Article 15, Clause 4 in our Constitution. Dear students, you must note that our constitution does not define the term weaker sections of people or weaker sections of the society. However, Supreme Court applied the means test for the purpose of identifying such sections of the society. If you see this famous judgment, Indra Sahani versus Union of India, commonly known as uh, Mandal Commission case, the Supreme Court observed in this case that expression weaker sections of the society is wider than expression backward classes of citizens or socially and educationally backward classes of citizens or scheduled castes and scheduled tribes because the expression weaker sections of the people connotes all sections of the society who are rendered weak due to various causes including poverty and natural and physical handicaps. So this expression Weaker sections of the people, Supreme Court says, is much, much wider than backward classes. It is much wider than socially and educationally backward classes of citizens. And it is much, much wider than scheduled caste and scheduled tribes. Because it covers all sections of the society who are rendered weak or who are weak due to various causes. And causes may be poverty, natural and physical handicaps etc, etc. Moving further, dear students, another direction, another directive principle given by our constituent makers to the state is contained in Article 47 of our Constitution. And this Article 47 of Constitution of India is one of the directive principle which directs the state to raise the level of nutrition and standard of living and to improve public health as among its primary duties and in particular the state shall endeavor to bring about prohibition of intoxicating drinks and drugs which are in dubious to health. So twofold direction is contained in article 47. First of all state has to raise the level of nutrition then standard of living and to improve the public health. These are the primary duties of the state. And particularly state will bring about prohibition of intoxicating drinks, prohibition of drinking alcohol or various drugs which are injurious to health. It is the duty of the state to make laws for prohibition of intoxicating drinks and drugs. And there are legislations prevailing in our country which prohibit the consumption of alcohol, which prohibits the consumption of drugs, even possession of alcohol, possession of drugs, drugs beyond a certain quantity is made punishable by so many legislations. In implementation of this directive principle contained in Article 47. Then, dear students, this Article 47, as I told you, it talks about the duty of the state to raise the level of nutrition and the standard of living and to promote public health. It says that state shall regard the raising of the level of nutrition and the standard of living of its people and the improvement of public health as amongst its primary duties. And in particular, the state shall endeavor to bring about prohibition of consumption 
except for medicinal purposes of intoxicating drinks and of drugs which are injurious to them. You know, in our country, we have all the, all, all the states have prohibition laws. And if I may talk about the state of UP, then in state of UP, we have UP Excise Act, which puts a ceiling of 2.5 liters of alcohol, which you can keep at home. You cannot keep more than 2.5 liters of alcohol at home. Beyond this 2.5 liter, it is a punishable offense. So state has made laws for control of consumption of alcohol. Similarly, there are restrictions on the sale of alcohol also. A retail shopkeeper cannot sell to a particular individual the quantity of alcohol beyond a certain limit. And similar is the case with the drugs. We have Narcotic Drugs and Psychotropic Substances Act in application in our country. But there is an exception also to this rule. Exception is for medicinal purposes only. Suppose a doctor is keeping alcohol spirit in his clinic or in his nursing home, which is beyond 2.5 liters. So for medicinal purposes, exceptions are there. That nursing homes, big hospitals, they can keep drugs even beyond that capacity, which is prohibited by law. So, dear students, this article particularly directs the state to regard the raising of the level of nutrition and standard of living of its people and improvement of health as its primary duty. And further, state is required to take steps to bring about prohibition of consumption and consumption of intoxicating drinks and drugs with exception of medicinal purposes. You see, no one has a right to sell liquor. One has to take license for selling liquor. It is expedient to control the use and traffic in liquor in public interest. That's why everybody is not allowed to sell the liquor. We have an important leading case on this point. That is state of Bombay versus FN Balsara. <laughs> In this case, the directives that the state shall endeavor to bring about prohibition of the consumption of intoxicating drinks and drugs was taken into consideration in support of court's decision that restrictions imposed by Bombay Prohibition Act in respect of possession, sale, use, or consumption of liquor were not unreasonable. There were reasonable restrictions on the right guaranteed under Article 19 1G to practice and profession, to practice any profession or to carry on any occupation, trade or business. Yes, I have a fundamental right to do any profession or to carry on any occupation or business and I want to do business of liquor. And restriction is that I will have to take license. Yes, this is a reasonable restriction. Then the quantity of liquor to be sold. Quantity of liquor which can be used by a particular individual. The quantity of liquor with reference to consumption of liquor also is restricted. So all these restrictions are reasonable restrictions which are contained in Bombay Prohibition Act. This was decided by the Supreme Court way back in 1951 in state of Bombay versus F.N. Balsara, that on the one hand, you have a fundamental right to carry on any trade, profession or business and your, you may do business of selling liquor. But the restrictions contained in Bombay Prohibition Act in respect of possession, sale, use or consumption of liquor are reasonable restrictions. So the validity of this act was upheld by the Supreme Court way back in 1951. This article 
particularly dealing with control of prohibition of intoxicating drinks and drugs will not cover the matter of consumption of intoxicating drinks or drugs for medical purposes. However, in the name of medicinal purposes, large scale misuse of intoxicating, intoxicating drinks and drugs can be prohibited under this article. If somebody under the garb of medical purposes is misusing intoxicating drinks and drugs, then that misuse can be prohibited under this article as reasonable restriction on the fundamental right to carry on any trade profession. So, dear students, thank you very much. This is all about this lecture. God bless you.